Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. What a game. I've talked about it before way back in my very first episode on Grind Session, but I haven't given it a review because there's really not much I can say about it that hasn't been said before. It's nothing short of a classic. But was it always destined to be the classic it is today? Well lucky for you, I happen to have three different betas of the game so we can take a closer look at what was left on the cutting room floor and what stayed in. So sit tight and get comfy, cause this is gonna be a long one as we dare to compare Tony Hawk's Pro Skater to its betas on the PS1. Real quick before jumping into the interesting stuff, I want to talk about each of the three betas themselves. They're all versions of the early THPS beta from April of 1999. Each contained pretty much the same stuff, though one is definitely earlier than the other, as it has a few differences which I'll get into later. Lastly, Beta 2 and 3 are identical from what I can tell. There may be some slight differences here and there, but I miss them if there are. With that being said, I'm going to use Beta 3 as my main comparison point since it's the most complete. Right off the bat, you'll notice that the title screen is different in the beta. The background image seems to be the same, but the finished title screen got quite the polish and therefore looks much cleaner. Past that, you'll notice that only single session and two player are selectable in the menu. Career mode is still here, but notice the absence of free skate and view videos. In their place is a practice option, which doesn't appear in the final game. All of the skaters are here, with the exception of Elisa Steamer, but nobody after Chad Muska had been modeled yet. Despite this, they're still selectable. In place of some of the characters are other moving objects in the game, most likely so they could test them. This leads to some hilarious surprises like choosing Kareem Campbell and ending up skating as the taxi from downtown for your livestream audience. Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, hold on. This is amazing. The stats are bars in the beta instead of circles like the final game and you bear a toughness stat which was replaced by the ollie stat in the final game. The level select screen is pretty barren in terms of design as it shows no preview image or world map, but it's certainly not barren in terms of levels. There's plenty of new locations to check out as well as familiar ones, but it's strange that the now iconic starting level warehouse is nowhere to be found in the game. The same goes for Burnside. Alright, let's start from the top with school. You no longer start on the awning as usual, but in mid-air above this bank of grass. If you go into the gym, you'll find a few points of interest. There are now half-pipes behind the bleachers which make the gym a less boring area, although they don't work as they should, and I imagine the ceiling would have gotten in the way, which is probably why they don't appear in the final game. A small kicker in front of a balance bar also makes an appearance in front of the bleachers. There's a strange cage in the top right corner that you can clip through to get into this glass enclosure. It serves no purpose outside of bridging together the roof of the gym to this building where you can grind a rail to get on top of the awning. Speaking of the gym roof, there are now giant fans atop of these slopes leading to it. Once on top, you'll find an extra half pipe that extends from one end of the roof to the wall over the alley. Around the back of the gym, the giant screen which usually plays music videos has skate footage on it instead. The big building which leads from the pool area to the gym is missing, so now the courtyard is visible from this hill. I kind of like this as it opens up the level a bit more. Everything else is the same outside of some different textures which you'll see all throughout the demo like these wood ramps here. Next is downtown. Unlike school, you do start in the right place. As you'll notice, for some reason sonic rings show up all over the demo for extra points. Near the park, there are beta trees that don't show up in the final game. Yep, I'm going as far as to talk about trees in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. With meaningless stuff in mind, how about these beta tables? Funny enough, the chairs that accompany them do show up in the final game. The most intriguing part of downtown is the addition of a parking garage near the movie theater. It's pretty boring as there's nothing to skate, although it does house a skate letter. Despite this, I can see why they took it out. Back on the topic of the movie theater, the rail that usually lines the inside is absent. On your way up to the rooftop, you won't find the grindable rails in this hallway, leaving you quite bored as you escape through. 
T isn't the only letter misplaced, as A is now behind this glass window off to the side of the rooftop. This room is in the final game, but goes unused. After launching yourself across the roof gap to get the secret tape, you'll be treated to a U-shaped bowl instead of the circular one found in the final game. Back on the streets, you'll notice that the rail that you'd normally grind to get the E is no longer here. It was about here that I finally noticed that the special meter is different and that you sprout a yellow aura when the meter is full. That does it for downtown, and much like school, it isn't very different. The same goes for the Chicago Skate Park, it's just as boring as it was in the final game. Nothing to compare here outside of some differences in textures, but we'll have more to look at here in a second. Next up is Downhill, not to be confused with Downhill Jam, as this is a completely different level. It mainly consists of a long and somewhat empty snake run, with some kickers to spice things up here and there. There's also a ton of tapes to collect that have no real significance. As you near the end of the level, you'll come across a watered down version of the skate park. The bowl, a few kickers, rails, and the half pipe are all still here, all bite, in different places. It's such a strange level, but one I really wish had taken the Chicago skate park's place in the original, as it adds a nice longevity to it. Apparently this was cut from the game because it too closely resembled a level out of the arcade game Top Skater. Mall is next on our hit list. It's worth noting at this point that the controls are pretty much the same, but might be a little jankier than the final product, which still had some small issues when it came to precisely maneuvering your character. At the start, you'll notice the breakable glass at the bottom of the garage is missing in the beta. All throughout, you'll come across numerous sign changes like the giant hanging signs near the fountains. There's now a sign for the car, which reads, Win a Roach. It was changed into a concrete kicker in the final game, and most store names are different, like Victor's Secret and Cramps Bar and Grill. Further in the level, you'll notice that the store near the escalators that you can break into is non-existent in the beta. A little bit before that, you'll come across the elevator area, which looks completely different here, and much to my surprise, the elevators do move. Back over at the escalators, you'll notice that they aren't as wide and take up less real estate in the beta. Lastly, some of the directories that you have to smash into in the final game are in different locations. The elusive classic concrete is exactly what it sounds like. A flat ground level made of concrete and other ground textures to test how the character models would react to different ground tiles. It always crashes the game for me, so the footage you're seeing is from YouTube. Nothing else of interest here, so moving on. It seems San Francisco wasn't always going to be in the game, as it's called Suburbia here. It's interesting that years later in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3, we'd get an official level named Suburbia. As mentioned before, this is an unfinished version of the San Francisco level, made up of what would be the Chinatown section and the park section, so no hub hideout or Lombard Street in the beta. Chinatown is pretty much non-existent in that it isn't designed to look like it in the beta, but the two kickers against the building in the final game are present as one giant quarter pipe in the beta. Also, the little alcove where you'd get the porch gap is missing entirely. My favorite part of this level is the hilariously oversized alien face in place of the sundial texture in the final game. To its right would be the donut shop, which isn't here, but the quarter pipe right next to it is, and brandishes an interesting texture unseen in the final game. The bark section is almost entirely missing outside of this giant mani pad and this wall with the kicker attached. The last thing of note here is the giant road that leads to nowhere off to the left side of the level. My best guess is that this was going to be Lombard Street before they moved it next to the donut shop. Next up is another scrapped level, Freeway. It consists of two parts, a partially built freeway that you can grind a gap across with a few quarter pipes to skate, and a construction area below with some trucks you can skate on and some quarter pipes built into pillars. You can also launch off the freeway and grind on this giant metal structure, or try and gap over some porta potties. The level is largely unfinished, leaving it quite barren, so there's not much to do here. The biggest issue is that once you've reached the bottom, there's no getting back up to the freeway, so I can see why they scrapped this. That being said, this is my favorite level in the beta, and I would have loved if this was cleaned up and put into the final game in place of something like Burnside, because this reeks of potential. I think this may have also been the inspiration for the construction level in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater x 2 on the Xbox. 
Our next destination is Roswell, which maintains the layout and design of the final game. There are a handful of small differences, but nothing significant like new areas. For example, almost all of the textures are different. It looks much sleeker and far superior in the final game. Heading into the bowl room, you'll find that the alien fossil looks much worse than in the finished product. The UFO is now built to shred as it's made out of ramps. The tank is still here, and like the UFO, looks quite different. I guess the Jeep wasn't in the budget at the time because it's nowhere to be found in the beta and in its place sits an empty cage. I'd like to point out that all of the cages have been switched around in the final game. The mountain where the alien resides has a downed UFO sticking out of the top in the beta. I kind of like this detail and wish it had stayed in. Note that there aren't any cool sliding doors going into the autopsy room. Here you'll find the alien itself looks quite different and is much brighter in the beta. Also there's a lack of autopsy equipment here. Back outside you'll notice that the warhead looks a lot less menacing and that the trucks, helicopters, and the satellite are still outside the level but they're all made of glass. So much for top secret. Alright, we're getting close to the end, but first we need to drop by Downhill Jam. Much like Roswell, not a whole lot has changed. If you turn around at the start, you'll notice the banner looks like it was made in MS Paint. Same goes for the finish banner. Note that the rail usually found between these two quarter pipes is missing. Towards the middle of the level, you'll find some giant metal pillars holding up the secret area, which were turned into giant rock slabs in the final game. As you approach the end of the level, you'll find that some boxes and a kicker right at the end are gone, and so is the ledge with the machinery attached to it. On the other side, you'll find the biggest difference, which is the addition of a dam in the water, which you can skate on. Also, take a look at that beta water. Is it just me, or does it look better than the water spouts in the final game? That's gonna do it for beta 3, let's hop over to what I can conclude is the earliest beta based on the addition of a test level in place of Suburbia. Outside of the test level, the only difference I could find is that some skaters aren't modeled, so picking them leads to you playing as Wooly from the Super Best Friends play. The test level is just that. Everything is made of concrete and looks pretty nightmarish. The most interesting things in this level are the giant playground equipment and the car all made of cement. I'm sure this was the first level built to test the overall engine. Nothing really exciting here, just an interesting look into the development. Before I wrap this up, I'll briefly talk about the other two remaining betas for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1, both of which are from July of 99 and are seemingly identical as they are dated three days apart from each other. There's the SK707 beta from July 7th, and what is referred to as the later THPS beta from July 10th, which was shown off at E3 that year. This beta is near complete and has little to no differences with the final game aside from some textures. Unlike the early beta, this does include the warehouse, Burnside, and a complete version of San Francisco. Again, there are very few differences, so I don't feel it necessary to go through this one with a fine tooth comb. Besides, the early beta is far more interesting as it gives us a peek into the early life of what is arguably the most prolific skateboarding game ever made. If you want to play these betas for yourself, you can find a link in the description and check them out in all of their boxy glory. That's going to wrap up this edition of Dare to Compare. I'll see you in the next one.